Uh, here we have a calculation for the analysis of a bolt. Uh, let's start uh, this problem simply and let's just imagine our bolted connection here. Uh, so we have uh, a bolted connection uh, bolting two plates together or two items together and to the joint we apply uh, a tensile force and a shear force. Let's just imagine for a moment that we've just fastened the knot up finger tight and there's no uh, tension in the bolt before we apply the loads. So here we have a plot of uh, bolt tension versus the uh, load applied to the joint and quite simply it shows that as you increase the load applied to the, the joint the load in the bolt is exactly the same value so we have a straight line and as we increase the load that's applied to the joint uh, at some point we will yield the bolt and at another point we will uh, go past the ultimate tensile load of the bolt and it will break. But that isn't really how we use bolts. Uh, what we do is we put some uh, initial tension into the bolt by torque tightening generally. So I'm going to put some more information on the curve to show what happens. This calculation uh, uh, has put in some uh, pretension into the bolt here. So the starting point for our bolt now is a, a tensile load of about 140 kilonewtons. Now when I begin to apply my load to the bolt two things happen. One thing is that we increase the tension in the bolt. But the second thing that happens is that we relieve the compression uh, uh, within the compression load path of the joint. So we can see two lines here. This is the increase in load in the bolt and the yellow line is an in, uh, a decrease in clamping load. Now for uh, the uh, joint to be capable of sustaining a shear force a clamping load needs to be present because we're going to rely upon friction uh, to uh, carry the shear load. So you can see what happens as we keep on applying loads and applying loads and applying loads we haven't yielded the bolt but what happens is the contact force uh, goes to zero. So in fact this bolt, uh, this bolted joint is just separating before we hit the yield and I've quite deliberately uh, set that to be uh, this value is 95% of the yield value uh, and that's uh, quite a, a sensible thing to use and I'll come on to explain that in a minute. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about um, the gradients of these lines. Uh, they, uh, the proportion of load that goes into the bolt depends upon the stiffness of the bolt and the stiffness of the compression load path. Now uh, there's lots of detailed calculations we can do uh, uh, to uh, calculate um, these two stiffnesses but typically for a um, for a steel bolt uh, we can use a value of about 0.24 so what this is really saying is that about 24 percent of the force you apply to a bolted joint to a steel joint anyway uh, goes into increasing the tension in the bolt and the remainder, uh, the 76%, uh, goes into reducing the clamp force. So that's an important factor there, this stiffness factor, and it's defining the gradients of these lines here. Uh, the next uh, thing that's important, uh, I, I should have probably already, already mentioned this, this is, um, this is a thread factor. Uh, and uh, what, it, it, what it does, it tells us how much preload we will get in a bolt uh, for a given applied tightening torque. And obviously the less friction there is in the thread and the less friction that there is uh, under the thread then the more uh, load you wind into your bolt tension um, rather than uh, lose the effort in friction. So we can see we get different values here depending upon how well lubricated our bolts are. Uh, so uh, I'm going to use uh, 0.2 uh, which is a, a standard value for an as-received bolt 
but you can see if we uh, lubricate it with uh, molybdenum disulfide then we can start to reduce that or we could use PTFE we can reduce that even further and what that means is that we get more pretension for a given tightening torque there's also a tightening factor and this tightening factor uh, uh, if you like if we took um, 50 volts and we uh, tested them all with the same tightening torque we will find there, there is a spread in the pretensions that you uh, find or the pretensions that you measure uh, and the reason for that is that the thread characteristics are slightly different the friction characteristics are slightly different uh, it can also be because of the accuracy of your uh, tightening method but uh, there's there's always a, a, a tightening factor and uh, I'm using uh, a standard value for uh, uh, for torque tightening bolts and what this is really saying is it's a value of 0.6 it, it says that we're getting we will get a maximum pretension value but we'll also get a minimum and the minimum will be about 60 percent of the maximum so I'm going to draw that on our diagram now we've already got our maximum pretension I'm going to pop on our minimum pretension case and you can see the two pretensions here with that before we apply load so there's two pretension values um, and you can see because this is starting at a lower pretension value uh, then as we apply load to the joint this uh, uh, this value begins this joint begins to separate obviously sooner than uh, a joint with a higher pretension value that that kind of makes sense so um, we can see that we could have if we tighten our bolt we could have our pretension anywhere between these two values and uh, we have to make sure that when we do a design that we uh, very carefully uh, uh, pay attention to this to this spread uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, friction obviously uh, the greater the friction value here uh, the greater the shear load you can carry so uh, there's uh, a number of typical uh, friction values that you can uh, have a look at um, obviously uh, you might want to tailor your joint to uh, uh, increase the friction that would be a sensible idea uh, now we're going to come on to applying actual loads to our joints and uh, actual loads to our joints and see what really happens so I've, I've got two cases that I'm interested in and generally we will we'll be interested in two cases we might have lots of forces acting on this joint but we'll probably be interested in the maximum tension force and that's as one case and the maximum uh, shear force as another case so let's take the maximum tension case first and, and I'm going to apply a uh, a tension load of 65 kilonewtons and I'm going to apply a shear load of uh, 2000 newtons now because we've got a, a, a coefficient of friction of 0.2 to carry 2000 newtons I need a clamp load of 10,000 newtons uh, so that's the required clamp force that I uh, need to carry my 2000 uh, newton shear force so I'm going to pop on this first case now I'm going to draw it onto the diagram uh, and we can see what happens here we've got our this is the external load 65 kilonewtons corresponding to this value here and we can read off that well the maximum tension that we'll see in the bolt uh, if we were uh, doing a detailed stress analysis of uh, the bolt itself the worst case for the bolt the maximum tension case would be in fact this point here it wouldn't be this point here because we start with a minimum pretension we increase from there so it would be in fact that but what's interesting uh, when we think about contact forces when we come to determine what what's the minimum clamp force we have there's obviously no point in using the uh, the maximum pretension case because that gives you a higher clamping force than the minimum pretension case which gives me this load here it says that the available clamping force is uh, 34 uh, and a half kilonewtons or so and I require 10,000 so you can see that um, provided this point is below this point here then we'll be fine for carrying uh, our shear load uh, I'm now going to show you this next case which is the maximum shear case so we've actually got higher value of shear a lower value of tension and let's just plot that on the curve okay uh, what we can see here this time we're only applying um, 25,000 uh, newtons uh, and 
our minimum clamping load is then 65 kilonewtons, and we want to apply uh, an 11,000 newton shear force, which when we use the coefficient of friction means we require 55,000 uh, clamping force. So this value is actually getting very close uh, to the available clamping force, uh, and that's uh, demonstrated in the um, uh, demand to capacity ratio being quite high here. It's getting, well, as soon as it gets above one, then we have a problem. So let's maybe let's uh, let's generate a few problems. Uh, let's let's go to the next size of bolt down. Let's choose an M20 this time. Okay. Now uh, we've got the same applied loads. And one thing we can see here is uh, this has now gone red, uh, and it's telling us that we have a problem uh, because we can't carry the shear force. And it's shown diagrammatically because uh, the required shear force of the required clamping force of 55 kilonewtons is now above the available clamping force of 48. So uh, we run the risk of this joint slipping, and you never really want to allow any joint to slip because as soon as they start moving they're in the uh, danger of be becoming loose in, in service and uh, all kinds of problems will follow that. We could take the calculation uh, to an extreme, we could we could choose a, an M16 bolt and this becomes uh, particularly silly and it's actually there's a few things going wrong at the moment here. Uh, one thing that it's throwing up is that we have a 65 um, kilonewton load applied and our separation load, the load at the point at which the joint separates is uh, this value here which you, we can, you can actually read off at the bottom which is 57, that's that value there so that's the, the uh, and when the when the joint separates then it clearly can carry no load so uh, I wouldn't be very happy with uh, this uh, 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 this diagram at all uh, really what we have to do uh, is go the other way and go for a bigger bolt and uh, we can see here that the uh, the joint is far more capable of carrying the, the maximum tensile load uh, and uh, the maximum shear loads. So I hope this has given you some idea of uh, why we need to think about bolts. I hope it's made sense to you. Uh, we need to I think very carefully about these factors here. Uh, the thread factor, the friction and uh, the amount of pretension we'll get for the available tightening torque. Uh, this value here which is the stiffness factor uh, which decides how much load that we apply to the joint actually goes into our bolts. This factor here which is the tightening factor which determines our spread of pretension values uh, and finally our friction uh, force. All these terms are important when it comes to bolt design. Thanks very much for listening.